Welcome everybody to the Shelley Sharp Memorial. We are out here in Scottsdale, Arizona at the beautiful Vista del Camino. We play the XL layout. Myself, Jennifer Allen with Sammy Kennington, Maria Oliva, and Sarah Isaac. This is the round two front nine coverage. We're starting here, the 284 foot hole one triple Mando. Added OB along the left side this year, tightening up the fairway, as well as behind the basket, circle's edge. Let that go a little to the right. Got caught up on the tree there. Made the mando. Sammy Kennington, she shot three down the first round. She makes the mando as well, but hits the tree on the left side of the fairway. So we're struggling out the door here on hole one. Let's see if Maria can get it all the way up there. She shot even round one. Hits the gap perfectly. I'm going to try to slide up to circle's edge. This is Sarah Isaac. She was one over in the first round. Sarah's a new upcoming uh, FPO player here <laughs> in Arizona. Ladies, have a fantastic round. So I, I think I ranged about 185 feet left to the pin which is just outside of my forehand uh, distance. So I went with the little backhand, trying not to go too far. All of us kind of ended up right at the exact same spot hitting these trees. And we put it up there nicely. A little disc retrieval in the background there. And Sarah plays the hill perfectly, sliding down to the basket. So Maria's got the only attempt at birdie here. Out in circle two. It's a hard basket to pet out because those branches actually hang down right about where if you need that big putt to come in. So it's a hard, long putt to hit on this hole. And we leave that a little short, heading from about 35 feet. Beautiful par save from Sarah. Little more sunshine out here today. It's been colder than usual for the Shelly Sharp. With a little bit of a breeze every day. First two days was coming out um, from the west. And Sammy gets the bogey on hole one and the rest of us took bars. Here we are, hole number two. This is 415 feet. You're going, it's a little bit longer than the previous years, tucked back behind this big pine tree. A few little trees on the right and left to get around as well. I'm going with a destroyer, trying just to get straight down there towards that big pine tree. Hung up on the one branch. Maria has a beautiful flight. Sneaking around that 
dead tree getting right up there outside circle one. Sarah trying to follow where Maria's disc went, gets just right in front of that tree. Well, Sammy's turned over just a little bit, a little low. She's going to have a nice open approach. So the fence on the right is out of bounds. Sammy's going to take it right in between the fence and the tree and scoot right up there to the basket. A little bit of a roll away. That's kind of a sneaky slope back there. Sarah scoots back just a little bit long. Her upshots are very accurate typically. Again, a couple of low branches where it really makes it difficult to attack for the birdie putt. <clears throat> Maria was going for it, and it's just really hard to get underneath those with the height to get to the basket. I have a little bit more of an open look. Still got hung up just a little bit. It's kind of a fun new placement being tucked back just a little bit more. Huge par save for Maria. Fortunately, lets that one go just a little bit high. Park gets a little noisy with the walking path and the highways nearby, the airport. Sammy saves the bogey. Good comeback putt there. I'm going to tap in my par. And then Sarah's going to unfortunately tap in her bogey as well. We're headed to hole number three. Hole number three is a par three, 360 foot hole. OB across the sidewalk as well as the fence to the right. And that little ditch with the cones um, doesn't come into play often, but we'll see if it does today. Quick shout out to Pete Ulibarri for doing the drone coverage of this footage. And I think I just pulled that destroyer a little too hard and turned it over. And I am going to find that nice little ditch that you rarely ever see. <laughs> Maria rips a huge hyzer. Gets a good skip right up there to the basket. Sarah lets this go a little bit early. She flirted with this on day one, but skipped out of bounds. Today, she stays right inside that sidewalk. <laughs> Sammy playing the nice hyzer route and skips just in front of the ditch, I believe. There's that very accurate upshot that we typically see from Sarah. She's been playing about three years now. It's fun to have some new FPO players out here.
So I was OB. This is for R. Gonna lay that up. As well does Maria. Trying to shake off those first few hole jitters. And this was about the most unfortunate thing I think I saw the entire day. <clears throat> that was a good putt, just a little right side chain. Baskets kind of slope a little bit with the ground kind of eroding some. Again, another great attempt and just not getting it in the basket. Okay, I was like, I don't know if you want to just get it or if you want me to go. So unfortunately, that was a triple bogey for Sammy. A bogey for myself as well. And Sarah and Maria are going to tap out their great pars. Okay, hole number four. This is a 381 foot hole. You can take the route along the left side there, which is a tight straighter shot or the big hyzer around this pine tree. A little bit of OB comes to play along the left side and around the basket. Maria going with that there, big there. hyzer. It's all the way around. Nice open approach at the basket. Good pull. Get a slip. Get a slip. They're trying to slide up there as well, right in front of the pine tree. It's being winter time here. The grass is a little dead, so you usually get quite a bit of ground play. I'm going with the, the big hyzer as well. Get a, getting a, a pretty good skip. That's probably one of my better drives I've uh, ever thrown on that hole. So, Sammy taking the inside route of the tree. And you have to be careful of getting too big of a skip. That is approaching where the OB kind of comes into play there on the, the left side. Maria giving a big bid. Stays close. A couple of good looks there. Definitely deep in circle two. Sammy's going to go ahead and tap that out. Not the start that she wanted. She shot three under yesterday, so going to have to start getting some birdies to catch back up in that pace. Good strong cut for Sarah for par. With the changes to the course and some of the pars for the women, there are a lot of great birdie attempts out here and, and several, a handful of eagle attempts as well. So lots of room out here to get some work done. 
going to go ahead and turbo put that birdie in. That's a good extra one to get. That's not one I typically plan on. Here we are, hole number five. This is a par four this year because they've added in two more mandos. We have a mando there on the left as well as the pine tree on the right. And now this year, two new mandos that we need to shoot between to approach this elevated basket. Going with my Jen Allen T-Bird. <laughs> Trying to get the distance to get around that tree, and I just That's barely that snuck it, around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I made it through. I couldn't tell if it was like a native tree. Making it a little too close to her comfort there on the Mando, but Maria puts it nice, perfectly it, it safe. The tree, but it definitely went behind it. I lost some. They're nice playing shot. the nice shot right into the middle so as well. <laughs> we have a little drone overhead right at the moment. Sammy getting a good pull, wanting that to Heiser. She's going to get a good kiss off that mando tree and stays on the, the correct side of it. And she looked like she threw that just perfectly, but again, sliding just a little bit long. Tammy getting a great approach there between the mando trees. Maria just gonna pitch it up for that tap in birdie. I lost sight of the disc completely. Yeah, you were I, straight on from the angle. I mean, I don't know. I landed right there yesterday, but it's a different disc. So. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was I, low. I even thought it might have kicked the it. front of the tree. I mean, Kelson's got it on film. <laughs> you were so at your shot. You know I was, that's definitely I was can't like, look at the footage, camera. but you always hate, or I personally hate, um, feeling like you're trying to work the system. So I did let the girls watch the video to to feel a little more comfortable that it did make it on the front side of that tree. So I'm just gonna lay up the putt there for the tap in birdie. And Sarah not realizing that that upshot went just a little past. Maria's gonna go ahead and tap out that birdie. Kind of a busy area again of the park, a lot going on. Gives it a nice high bid trying to get the, to the elevated basket. Unfortunately, that hyzer's off to the left. But she is able to go ahead and make that still a great far save. This is one of those that um, making it longer and the double mandos. Kind of a three and a half on the whole, but went ahead and gave the, the women a par four. Hole number six is the last hole on this side of the track. 783 foot par five OB fence and marked line on the right, as well as marked line on the left side of this all the way down to the pavilion, which has a circle 
OB line behind the basket as well. Wind was starting to shift on us just a little bit. Was able to go ahead and keep the safe hyzer play. A lot of different ways you can approach this first shot. You can take the safe hyzer route. You can go through the gut here, get a little more distance on the shot like Maria did, as well as even taking it around the left side with a big turnover or forehand. Main goal is just trying to get up the fairway and stay in bounds. So we have a couple more shots to get to the basket. They're playing that fence line, gonna get a skip back towards the middle. You ride that rail all the way down. Sammy getting a nice second shot out towards the middle of the fairway. So this is kind of a tricky area because it, it makes you want to possibly take that straight shot down the middle there, which rides the OB, or the more difficult shot of having to either turn over your approach around the trees in the middle or go straight out. But you have to be careful not to go too far. Maria getting a lot more turn on that approach and has the height to get over those trees. That was a beautiful shot. have a little bit more of an open hyzer route at it. These trees are definitely getting taller and making that second shot a little bit harder. We have a cute little friend that joined us briefly. Beautiful cat. One of the condos right next to the course. They're coming in with a beautiful forehand, trying to get a good skip up there. It's going to be circle two. Maria throwing her forehand as well, getting a little more distance on it. She's going to curl right up there. Beautiful approach. All going forehands here. Sammy gives a shot with hers. Goes off just a little bit to the right. That's going to be probably close, um, just inside circle one or at the line. I unfortunately got right behind the big pine tree here. So again, low branches, elevated baskets makes for really hard putt. And with it being a par four, or I mean a par five, excuse me, just really not worth risking it when we can just lay up and try to get that uh, tap in birdie. So again, about circle's edge, maybe just outside, elevated basket, really makes for a difficult putt. Strong birdie putt from Maria. Got a few spectators walking with us every round, which is really nice. Par save from Sarah. Sammy's going to tap in her par. And I'm going to follow it up and get a birdie with Maria on hole number six. So now we'll be heading across the street. To hole number seven. I started playing disc golf with my family when I was eight years old. 
When I was 16, I got my first job as a cook at a bowling alley, and that's when I made my first batch of beef jerky. As I got better at throwing, I also got better at making beef jerky. Everyone told me they loved my jerky. After 15 years of making my beef jerky as a hobby, I decided to make it available to everyone. Double G Craft Jerky. Give it a try. You're going to love it. So hole number seven is 645 feet. We have OB sidewalk and beyond on the right side, as well as the street on the left. This year we have the Island green. So any shot past this sidewalk is in an OB area until you get to circles edge. Going with the destroyer, just trying to play that middle landing area. You don't want to get too far pinched off on the left side. It makes the approach a lot more difficult. Maria catching just a little bit of the branch, but doesn't really take a lot of distance. It does flip it over and she's going to slide across the sidewalk there. This is the area that the wind even if it's blowing the same way all day, it feels like it always shifts. Get a little bit of a cross wind here and it can easily flip it over towards the pond. Sarah hitting that middle landing zone. <laughs> Sammy getting a good safe hyzer out there. And that's just right where you wanna be. Maria going for the green here. And she's going to land short of that. Sammy going for the layup to pitch over towards the island. Sarah going for that island green as well. Just needing it to skip over. And it does perfectly. You just have to barely get it over that little wall. And that's exactly where you need to be to get right up next to the basket. I'm able to keep that firebird into that back corner. <laughs> Sammy playing a good hyzer right around. There's also that mando tree on the left. So Maria taking that from the drop zone because she her second shot went out of bounds. So now she is taking a provisional here because we were just unclear if you continue to throw from the island or if it's where it went out. So we discussed it a little bit, always safe to take the provisional. So this is going to be where her original drive or upshot went over the wall, which after speaking to the TD and clearing up all the rules here, um, this was the play that she ends up going with. Unfortunately, that putt just a little high. Again, putting high on these elevated baskets, clearly a lot of distractions going on. So this was her provisional shot, both going about the same um, area on the putt. Trying to give it a nice little soft bid, not go too far. This is why some of us wear headphones. <laughs> Luckily, we don't hear all of this extra noise. Nice. 
huge putt for the birdie for Sammy. That feels good after a few missed putts on that front nine. So this was Maria's provisional putt. And I believe this is the one she ends up taking. It was a difference of one stroke. A couple of beautiful comeback putts though. So she's gonna end with an eight, I believe for the hole. Huge eagle for Sarah. I believe in the first round, her eagle on hole 11, she said was her first eagle in a tournament. So that's always fun. I'm gonna tap in that birdie and we're gonna move on to hole number eight. That's a 360 foot hole over the water, which carries about, I think 280 feet, 300 feet to get across that water. Those pine trees there on the right side come into play. And then OB sidewalk behind the basket. There, keeping that nice and straight. Gets yeah. that low flight. Woo Definitely had the distance yeah. to, to get up in that circle. A little bit of a tailwind, keeping it a little close to that pine tree, but able to sneak Woo. by. Sammy <laughs> playing it close to the pine trees as well and doesn't lose the disc, but does stay up in the tree, which unfortunately in this tournament is a uh, two meter rule is in effect. So that would be out of bounds. I think that wind kind of just started easily pushing all of our discs towards those pine trees. Maria's unfortunately falls down OB as well. This is from the drop zone, about 200 feet. Came so close to going in. Quick shout out to all of our spotters and volunteers. So this again, we're playing back-to-back -back provisionals here. So that is, um, I think it ended up being OB. That concrete area is out of bounds. This is her actual shot. She took the last place inbounds before her disc got stuck in the tree. So her disc was stuck over the water, but calling the provisional again always just saves those strokes. You can figure it out later. So you're gonna see Sammy take two throws at this as well. She did touch the grass, so she was able to take that putt from the grass area. That is gonna be her play that she goes with which does end up saving her a stroke since that second, uh, the very first shot, the provisional from the drop zone was out of bounds. Sarah with a beautiful birdie. So we're going eagle birdie there for Sarah. Oh, catching just a little bit of left chain hard this basket kind of sits a little low so we've been putting on all these high elevated baskets and now we're having to put back down hitting a little low left side Good solid putt from Sammy. I believe that triple 
bogey is incorrect. Um, talking to the TD, I believe it just ended up being a double bogey for the day. Hole number nine, the last hole on the front nine here. The women's tee is down here to the right side. You're gonna shoot between these, the row of trees here. There is a little bit of a bank over there. Um, the water is a little bit low at the moment. So if you do skip off, you can stay safe if you get caught up in the rocks there. Yeah, a little bit of a shifting wind again. Maria playing a great hyzer. That sidewalk behind the basket is out of bounds as well, so you have to be careful not to go too far. And those low branches just kind of make you mentally throw that disc just a little bit low off the tee. You want to hit that nice open air there between the trees. Sammy going to lay that up with the tap in par. Outside circle one. Giving it a good bid. All of us about the exact same spot and continue to hit the basket at the exact same spot as well. A little scary of a putt with the, the water right behind us. Even though there is a little bit of a safe area, you're looking straight at water. So all of us keeping the nose down just a little bit on those pets. We're all going to tap in for the pars and move on to the back nine. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Become a Patreon so Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, can continue to bring you such amazing coverage. Shout out to Tyler who filmed this for us as well. As this round stands, currently I am at, sitting at three under for the day.